Welcome back to Daybreak. This Thursday morning, Alaska history lesson, A Tale of Two Kates. You may have heard of the infamous Kathleen Rockwell, better known as Klondike Kate, who lived during the Gold Rush era and earned quite the reputation for her dancing. But as author Laurel Downingville tells us in this week's story time with Ann Phil, there was another Kate who gained notoriety for having a more commendable set of skills. Good morning, Laurel. Good morning. So who is this other Kate that some of us may have never heard about? <laughs> well, her name was Catherine Ryan. And ill-fated love brought her north during the Klondike Gold Rush era. She had just from Canada, and she'd fallen in love and wanted to marry this young man. However, his mother had different plans, and she sent him off to the seminary to be a priest, which kind of put a kibosh on the love plans. Well, Kate came to Seattle, worked as a nurse for a while, and then heard word of the Klondike Gold Rush and thought, what the heck, I'm going to go off on an adventure. And so instead of going up the Chilkoot Trail, like most of them did after landing in Skagway, she went to Wrangell and went along the Stikine Trail. So the road less traveled back then. And I have to assume she had some help then to get to the Klondike if she took that way. She ran into some Canadian mounted police in Wrangell and started cooking for them. And they liked her cooking so much they invited her to go with them on the trail of the Stikine. And so along they went and she cooked for them on the way. But when they stopped to set up a permanent camp, she continued on all by herself, walking to Glenora in Canada, which at the time it was just a little settlement that had blocked blossomed to more than 3,000 because of the Klondike. And then later she walked on to Atlin and eventually walked on to Whitehorse. And there she pitched her tent and put out a little sign that said Kate's Cafe and started a restaurant. Uh, so it's at that time that she was propositioned, not like the other Kate, to take on a new role. What was that? The Canadian Mounted Police asked her if she would become the first female constable to watch over the women that they arrested for whatever behavior. Um, and she had no trouble with these troubled women either because she was over six feet tall, so nobody really messed with her. She also became a gold inspector and earned some royalties off the gold nuggets that she looked over. And she did keep her nursing going too, so nursed whenever she had to. And eventually she uh, became known as Klondike Kate. That was a term of endearment that the people in, in Whitehorse gave her. However, it was kind of uh, interesting that word of Klondike Kate the dancer got back to Kate's, the nurse's home in Canada. And her parents learned that she was Klondike Kate. Well, they thought she was that Klondike Kate. And they thought, what have we done? We raised her better than that. Well, our Kate Ryan went back to Canada and talked to her parents and the townspeople and assured them she wasn't that Kate. Um, and then she never married. Uh, she raised, helped raise three of her nephews. And she died peacefully in Vancouver in 1932. Wow. So if you're ever uh, maybe telling your friends or family in the lower 48 some some great tales of Alaska and Kate comes to mind. <laughs> Make sure you mention and you're very specific about the right one. Now, Laurel, you'll be gone for a few months now. Story time will be on hiatus for a bit. Where are you, where are you headed this winter? We're heading to Sacramento. Um, our four-year-old grandson, Tobin, was diagnosed with leukemia in August. So he's been undergoing extensive and heavy-duty chemo treatments. So we're going down to help out. He has, he has two brothers who are twins at the age of two, so there's a lot of activity in that house right now, and they need some help. It is 90% chance that he will be fully cured, so that's the positive news, but it's like a three-year process. Once they detect no leukemia in his blood, he still has to go through chemo for several years. So. Um, if you want to know more about him, there's a really nice page set up under You Caring where there's donations to help out. Um, they've got great insurance, but everything is not covered. So it is a financial burden on the family, too. But we're going down to help out with the, him and the twins and, and be, be gone for a while. All right. Well, we will certainly miss you. We will see you in a few months. And uh, Tobin, our thoughts and prayers are with you, buddy.